Man, this thing sure is short and chunky. Kind of like that girl you liked in high school. Anyhow, this is the new Radio Oddity GD168. It's actually a rebranded Anytone radio that they're selling. It is a DMR and analog FM. It is a dual band, so you can use it on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And in case that's a little too chunky for you, it does come with a smaller, more slimline battery. Before we get too far down the road, I did want to say that I was contacted by Radio Oddity, and they asked if I would do a review of this particular radio. And of course, I said yes, because I actually really like these uh, Anytone made DMR handhelds. That means they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. Now, if you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I'd suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to connect this up to a Tiny SA Ultra, which we have right here. And we're going to measure the carrier signal when we key up this radio. And we're going to, maybe we'll call it the incident signal. How about that? And then we're going to look for harmonic spurs that are out of band and see if this causes any interference on the HF radio spectrum. In order to pull this magic off, what we do use is some attenuation. Now, this is two different attenuators. The first one is a 10 watt 40 dB attenuator, and then we have a 1 watt 30 dB attenuator. So it's going to be about 70 dB of attenuation because we want to make sure that we protect the front end of our tiny SA. We're going to connect this directly to the radio. When we do this, we want to have the attenuator with the highest power handling capabilities first in the direction of the outgoing power from the radio just to make sure nothing bad happens. Let me get all this connected up and we'll talk a little bit about it and then we'll talk a little bit about the rules that govern spectral purity. Okay, so here's how we're set up. We just have an adapter here to connect our attenuator. This is the lower power than the higher power and this is connected into the radio. This USB-C cable goes to my computer so we're gonna look at this on the computer screen so it's a little bit easier to read. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that I have it sitting on this pad to reduce some of the strain that is coming out of this contraption that we have connected here. Oh, the last thing is, is that uh, this radio has multiple power levels. We're only going to test the three highest power levels. The lowest is 0.02 watts, and that's just a little bit low to get a reliable reading. In my opinion, somebody might want to argue about that, but uh, we'll be okay with that argument down in the comments section. So let's go ahead and get started and see what we have. And I know I'm going to get asked, here is the operating manual. I take this with me everywhere. When you take a look at it right here, you can see the third row down, switch the power between super high, high, middle, and low power. But it doesn't tell you what that is. So you have to go in the back and under transmitting part right here, we only test on VHF. That is 5 watts, 2.5 watts, 1 watt, and 0.02 watts, like I mentioned earlier. All right, let's take a quick look at the rules. And what we're really going to pay attention to is the second paragraph. It says, for a transmitter having a mean power of 25 watts or less, that's this radio, the mean power of any spurious emission supplied to the antenna transmission line, that's really the feed point of the radio, must not exceed 25 microwatts and must be at least 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission but need not be reduced below the power of 10 microwatts. Down here, I did a little bit of math for everybody. And what it shows is, is that 25 microwatts, which is 0 0.000025 watts, is equal to negative 16.02 dBm. 10 microwatts, 0 0.0001 watt, is equal to negative 20 dBm. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I have the radio set for what they're calling middle power, and let's go ahead, and this is one watt, let's go ahead and key this up and see what we see, but first, we have to configure our tiny SA. So I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to go to measure. When I go to measure, there's an option for harmonic, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick harmonic. And on this thing, let me just check real quick and see what the uh, radio is set to. It's set for 146525. So I'm going to go 146.525 megahertz. Now what it's asking me is the center, the span for each section that the screen is going to be divided into. And let's just do 
we'll do five megahertz. I might have said megabytes earlier, but I meant five megahertz. So there you can see our screen is divided into various sections by that blue line. The next thing I want to do is I want to set a threshold line because it makes it easier to do the math. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to display and then there should be something called draw line, which is right here. And I'm going to do this at negative 16.02 times one. And now you should see a blue line running horizontally. And oh boy, look at this thing. That's way up at the top. The next thing I need to do is set our external gain. In this case, that is negative 70 dB. And so what I want to do is I want to go into level and then pick external gain. And I want to go negative 70 times one. And let's see what we get. Now our tiny SA is set up and ready to go. Let's go ahead and key up and see what happens. And that's really, really clean, folks. Uh, everything is below that line, which would be 40 dBm down from the, uh, from the fundamental emission. So we're pretty happy with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my power level to high. Not super high, just high. So we've done that, and now I'm going to key up again and see what happens. A super duper clean folks this is one of the cleanest hts that uh that i've tested here so we're pretty happy with that as well so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to super high which is five watts and we should get around 37 db uh, that would be around five watts And there we are at uh, 36.5, 36.6, which is 36.7, which is close enough because we probably are getting some loss through this contraption. But again, we're looking super duper clean here, folks. So in terms of the spectral purity test, this thing's passed. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching and thanks to Radio Oddity for sending me this radio for my consideration.